All right, guys, so we're going to talk about programming languages today. And I think this video is going to end up being quite controversial with a lot of dislikes and hateful comments, because I'm going to rank programming languages today on tier maker. And I'm going to rank them based on my subjective feelings about them. And I'm going to mix those feelings with objective criteria, maybe. But this video is going to be more like an entertainment video. It's not, it's not going to be super educational. I'm not going to show you some stats and job opportunities. I'm just going to talk about the languages and give you my opinion on them uh, because I get a lot of questions about programming languages. What do you think about Go? What do you think about R? What do you think about C Sharp and so on? So today I'm going to tell you what I think about all of those here um, from assembly to visual basic. And we're going to start with assembly. Now, those are the tiers that I have for ranking. So those are the slots, S being the best one and F being the worst one. So S is going to be the God tier. Uh, I'm only going to put languages in there where I think the world could not exist without them. Computer science or, or the programming world could not exist without them. And then we have F, which is the most garbage category here. So I'm only going to put languages in here that I really hate. Um, yeah, so let's get started with assembly. Assembly is a language that I personally don't code a lot in. Um, actually, almost not at all. But I have used it for some capture the flag. So for some binary exploitations and for some debugging and so on. It's quite a cool language, but I'm not going to this this language. I'm not going to rank it because I like it so much and because I use it so much, but because it's the bedrock of programming. Like this is the most basic thing for understanding computers. And it's the basis of, of all programming. It's the first abstraction layer, which is above binary code, machine code. So this is in fact, one of those God languages. I don't think that the programming world could exist without assembly. Next up, we have bash or shell scripting, this little thing here, and I'm going to put it into the C category. Because even though I like playing around with a terminal and trying all the different commands and doing fancy stuff in the Linux terminal, I'm not really using it in shell scripting. So I'm not really writing any scripts. Whenever I want to automate something on Linux, I usually use Python or Go or some other language. I'm not using shell scripting to write something in a command line. I always use Python almost uh, when it goes beyond configuring, configuring the bash RC file. Now you can say that's just because I'm not working in a niche where I need a lot of shell scripting. And that might be true, but I'm not really using shell scripting as a language too much. So I'm going to put it into a C category here. Uh, then we also have the C programming language. And this one is a little bit hard for me. Because uh, it's not quite the bedrock of programming, but it's kind of the bedrock of modern programming. So it's the assembly. It's not the assembly, but it's like one layer above assembly. It's the portable assembly. And I also like the syntax of it and how it's structured. And I really like the language because it's so simple, even though programming in it, it's not too simple because you need to manually take care of a lot of things. But C itself is a very simple language. And I think it's a very powerful language. And it's a platform independent assembly. So I would think that or I would say that this is definitely an S tier language. Uh, right next to assembly. Notice that those are not necessarily the two languages that I use the most, but those are languages that I just think are the, the bedrock of programming in general. Python is based on C and C++. C++ itself is based on C. Java is based on C, C++. C Sharp is based on C, C++. MySQL is also, I think, based on C and C++. All those languages are in, in some way linked to C. So this is definitely a God tier language. Next up, we're ranking C++ and I'm going to put it either in the A category or the B category. I'm definitely not going to put it into the S category because I think the world can live without C++. I think the world cannot live without C and assembly. So A or B. Now, C++ is great for game development, for hardware intense programming, whenever you want to do something with visual computing or uh, graphical computation, you're probably going to go with C++. Um, but I think it can be replaced. The popularity is at least not rising. Um, and a lot of great competitors like Rust and Go are coming up. So I would put it at B because I want to reserve A for very high potential languages that I really like. Uh, so I'm going to put C++ at B. 
And I'm going to also put C sharp at B because uh, for different reasons, because I don't think that C sharp is going to be necessarily replaced easily. But C sharp, even though it has .NET Core and all that, is still very focused on Microsoft. It started like that and it's still like that. It's, it's still mainly for Windows and mainly for Microsoft. And even though I also use Windows on my main system, I still prefer languages that are platform independent. But you cannot argue that C sharp is a bad language. You can also use it for game development. And I personally have programmed in C sharp in high school for one or two years. And I really enjoyed it. I liked the syntax. I liked all the frameworks, uh, ASP.NET and the desktop um, graphical user interface environment and so on. So I think C Sharp is a good language, but it's still, for, for me personally, doesn't, re doesn't deserve to be in the A tier yet. Now, this here, I think, is CSS, right? So this is a style sheet, which is not a programming language. So I don't know why this is called ranking programming languages. Uh, but a style sheet... Now, if we're honest, we would have to put it into the S category because I don't think the web can exist without CSS, at least as of right now. Uh, but I don't want to do this because it's not a programming language. And it's also, you know, we can put it at C just because we want it to be there. Or we can just ignore it and, and leave it down here and maybe put it in the end somewhere. I don't know. Uh, let's just skip it for now because it's not a programming language. And we're also going to skip HTML later on. So let's go with Fortran. Fortran is a language that I have never coded a single line in. I'm not even sure what the syntax looks like, but I know it was the old C or the old Java, like the main language in the old times. Um, I would just put it at C because I don't know. I don't know anything about it. So I, I'm just going to put it there. Um, it's kind of a neutral category here, I think. So I'm going to put it there. Then we have Go, and you all know that I'm in love with Go. I really like Go. In my video on the uh, top five programming languages to learn this year, I had Go on number two. I really think that this has great potential. This language has great potential. It's backed by Google. It's used in a lot of interesting projects, and it's growing a lot. I think on GitHub, it was ranked four or five in pull requests. It's a very, very interesting language, and I also like the syntax and the whole system of it, so I'm going to definitely put it into the A category, uh, and I hope it's going to gain popularity over time. So then we have Haskell. Um, this is an interesting one because I don't think that you're really going to need it much unless you know, you're know you working for a company or you're working in a context where it's, it makes a lot of sense to use functional programming uh, and and especially to use Haskell in production, which is done in some companies, but most of the time you're not going to do it. But I think Haskell is a great choice to just learn functional programming. Currently, I'm having a university course where I'm learning functional programming using Haskell. And even though I'm probably not going to code in Haskell in the future a lot, I still learn functional programming concepts and functional programming thinking by coding in Haskell. And I think it makes you a better programmer to know it so when it comes to using it, I would not really say it's a great language or necessarily a language that you have to learn, but I think you should learn it just because you should learn functional programming. So I'm going to put it into a C category, a pretty neutral category. Uh, we're going to skip HTML and now we get to a very controversial one, Java. Sorry, um, Java is a language that is very popular. A lot of businesses are using it. It's used in finance, it's used in banking systems and insurances. It's great for large scale projects. Um, I personally just don't like it. I, I'm not sure why, to be honest, I cannot name you objective criteria, but I think just just the style of programming in Java, I don't like it. I, I'm not sure why it's, it's too enterprise, it's too, too big. Maybe it's just because it's so focused on big applications. I think Java is besides Python, the language I have coded the most in, and I just don't enjoy coding in Java. But to be fair, I think there are a lot of great jo uh, job opportunities out there. And I think it's technically speaking, a language that is very hard to be replaced or to replace. So I would definitely put it into the B category. If I would like it, I would probably put it into the A category, but I don't think that it's a bad choice to learn Java, so I'm going to put it at B. All right, then we have the next controversy, which is JavaScript. And I personally can tell you one thing, I don't like JavaScript, I don't like coding in JavaScript, but nowadays, if you're realistic, 
you need to admit that JavaScript is the language not only of the web, but almost of everything. So many things can be done with JavaScript nowadays, no matter what you're doing. It doesn't have to be web development, doesn't have to be front-end development. It can be Alexa skills, it can be desktop applications and mobile apps. JavaScript is everywhere and together with Python, this is probably the most, most mainstream language that you can learn. So I would really say learn at least some JavaScript. I wouldn't say it's a god tier language, but it's almost a god tier language. I think it can be, it could be replaced. Um, but not quite as it's not quite as important as C or assembly. And also I'm not a big fan of it. So I'm going to put it into the A category. You should learn JavaScript. It's definitely a good idea. Then we have Kotlin and I'm going to make this very simple. I'm going to put it into the C category because I don't know anything about it. I just know that it's trying to replace Java, which I like probably because I don't like Java. Maybe if Kotlin replaces Java, it's better but I've never written a single line in Kotlin. I've never read a single line in Kotlin, so I cannot tell you anything about it. Um, so I'm just going to put it into a neutral category. Then we have a LaTeX or a LaTeX or a LaTeX or whatever is, however it's pronounced. Um, that's actually not a programming language, but I'm going to rank this one because I like it. I think that it's a very important language, especially if you're in university and you wanna write some scientific papers or you want to do anything that has to do with formulas and proofs and so on. Uh, even though it's not necessarily a programming language, it's more like a mark markup language like HTML. Um, I want to put it into the A category because I like it and it's very useful. So I don't know what that is, to be honest. And I hope I don't get hate for it because maybe it's a very popular programming language, but I have no idea what this is, to be honest. I have no damn idea. So I'm going to just uh, skip on this. Then we have Lua. Um, I know what Lua basically is, but it falls into the same category as Kotlin. I've never done anything with it. So I'm going to place it into the C category. Oh boys, then we get to MATLAB. Oh yeah, that's what I reserve the F category for. MATLAB is the most garbage piece of programming that I have ever seen. Now I'm going to probably also get some hate for it but there's so many memes out there that MATLAB sucks. It's, it's just a bad language. I really don't like it. I know it's used in, in graphical computations and in scientific computing and in universities and so on, but I think you can use Python or R or any other language. I really don't like MATLAB. The whole style of coding in this language, I, I coded in MATLAB for a year uh, because of my university and I hated it. I really hated it and I, I never wanna go back to it. I really don't enjoy MATLAB. It's the worst language I've ever coded in. Then we have MySQL, even though it's not a language, first of all, because, or is MySQL a language? Yeah, it should be a language. Uh, but, but it's not a programming language, it's a query language. Um, but I think it's, if you, if you ask me about SQL in general, not just MySQL, but SQL in general, I would say it's a god tier language, definitely, because what do you want to do? You want to do databases only with JSON. You need the asset principle. You need relational databases and you need a query language for that. And it's very hard to replace SQL. I don't think that anyone can do that. Uh, Perl, very simple. C, never, never coded in it at all. Now we get to a very, another very controversial one, PHP. I don't like it, but WordPress is running on PHP. And if you if you deny that PHP is a very influential language and a very a language that is in high demand and very important and you can use it for freelancing, freelancing and you can make a lot of money with it, you, you cannot deny that. PHP is a great language when it comes to that. I don't like it, but I think it's very important. So I'm going to put it into the B category, uh, maybe between A and B, I'm not sure, but I really dislike it. So I'm going to put it into the B category here. Uh, then we have PowerShell, um, yeah, same as Bash, probably. I'm going to put it in D, first of all, be because we don't have anything in the D category, but also because I'm not really using PowerShell. On Windows, I'm using the Linux subsystem. Maybe the PowerShell is great, but I don't like it. I'm, I, I think it's confusing. Um, I, th I don't think that the Linux terminal is confusing, but especially as a programming language, I don't think PowerShell is really interesting to me. So I'm going to put it into the D category. Um, 
then we have Python and Python. I I've talked about Python for hours on this channel, but I'm going to tell you one thing. It's not a God tier language because you can replace it even though it's super important and, and super great for machine learning and data science and so on and for all sorts of different things. And I really like this language. It's replaceable and it has um, some problems. So I'm going to put it into the A, but it's probably uh, the best A language here. So I would put it in between S and A, but I, I really like it, but it's, it's still not a god tier language. Then we have R, which is a statistical language or a data science language. Uh, let's make it easy. I think it belongs in the B category. It's a great language, but Python can replace it for the most part. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And especially if you're focused on statistics only, this is, um, this is the next level. If you're, if, if you're comfortable using Excel sheets, you should probably transition to R. That's how I see it. Uh, then we have Ruby. I've not really coded in Ruby, but I know that Ruby on rails is a great framework. Even though it's losing popularity, I think it belongs into the B category. Then we have Rust. I've not really coded anything in Rust, but I know it's trying to replace C, C++, and it's on the rise. So I'm going to put it either C or B. I would put it right in between. Uh, but we have a bunch of garbage in C here, so I'm going to put it into B, even though it's on the lower end of B. Then we have Swift. I cannot tell you anything about Swift. I just know it's important for app development. So maybe it belongs to B because it's important after all. Uh, I'm not sure to be honest, but I would put it into C, uh, upper end of the C category. And then we have Visual Basic. This language here, um, most of you guys have probably nothing to do with Visual Basic. It was my first programming language that I ever learned. I think uh, when, I don't, I'm not sure which year it was exactly, but I was nine years old. And the first thing that I did when it comes to programming is writing some visual basic programs, some basic uh, spammers and music bots and so on. So because of this nostalgic reason, I would say visual basic belongs into the B category. And I also think that it's very important in the business sector. So if you're working with Xs or Excel, and you're also using some programming in there, it can be quite useful. So I think it's a definitely de definitely an important language uh, which belongs into the B category. And then we have those here. Uh, two of them are definitely not a programming language. I don't know what this is, but since I don't know what this is, I've never used it. So I would probably put it into the C category. And those two, if we're honest, we would have to put them in A or S. So this is what it would probably look like if we're honest, even though this hurts my eyes, but, but yeah, that's the list. All right. So that was my ranking on the different programming languages that we just saw. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below what your ranking is or what languages you would put into the F or S category, because those are the most interesting ones, maybe a as well. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to smash like and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.